Hello, I'm Kylie Olsen. This is The Pit. And look who's here. It's the incredible Biffy Clyro. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? Good. Really? Really yeah. well. We are yeah, pleased we're, to be here. We're well. We're comfortable on this lady sofa. It's Ooh. very nice, isn't it? We might just Ooh. fall asleep while we're here. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been working hard in the studio, I believe. We have, All yeah. All going well? We are, yeah, we're starting work on a record for a movie that, mm -hmm. that we're about to film. We're involved in the filming of it and the music and everything. So, yeah, we're working on music for that right now. And we start in earnest kind of in two weeks. We go into the studio to start yeah. start the drums and that. So, yeah, exactly. very exciting. It's, uh, it's exciting between records when you're kind of starting a new project because you're never quite sure where it will take you. So, mm -hmm. it's a very extreme moment. Yeah. Yeah. And so, will you be in the movie as well? Well, you know, I'm quite, uh, you know. <laughs> I like to think I'm a good actor. <laughs> yeah, no, not yet. No. Not yet, but oh, maybe, what? maybe once the ego grows Goodness. halfway through production, yeah. they'll be like, you know, who'd be good for this role? Yeah. <laughs> Me. Uh -huh. No, I, I think I think we're uh, we're aware of our limitations. Yeah. Uh -huh. I think music is where we excel, and perhaps if we were to broaden her horizons, it might limit her horizons. I'm a shocking actor. <laughs> even, even a silent part. I mean, there's a music video we did, and. Uh, only to do that, and I messed that up. Yeah. Over overacted doing that. So <laughs> I, I don't want to be. So an you're not going to be. No. In it. No. It's, you get a little taster when you're making music mm. videos, and I think that's probably just enough, enough to keep the ego yeah. up there, nice and big ego, <laughs> but but you know not to get too carried away. So yeah, mm. but we'll see. Never say never. So as well as the, the the album that you're working on for the movie, you've got the second part of Ellipsis as well. Is that coming? Well, actually, there's not enough time in the year for that. I'm afraid mm. we. Last year we were going to release the Dot yeah. Dot Dot, which was the accompanying album, but basically we ended up doing MTV Unplugged and we and that became a record, which we're going to talk about, became a record in itself and it just, we didn't want to just squeeze in music and just shove just it out quickly. Like, yeah, yeah. We, we, we cherish our music mm -hmm. and so actually a couple of songs from that record is going to end up being on the movie soundtrack yeah. and a couple of songs from another record I made called ZZC is going to end up on the soundtrack. So. We're kind of pulling everything together, and I think we're mm -hmm. going to end up making a really special record because of it. But it just seemed like too much to release kind of three albums in six months. Yeah. It just <laughs> felt a bit. Yeah, it's a bit much, maybe. Yeah, yeah, even for us, I know. <laughs> I can't be bored listening to this <laughs> anymore. So you mentioned MTV Unplugged. Mm. Now, when you Google MTV Unplugged, you've got acts like, you know, Alice in Chains, Nirvana, Pearl Jam, Eric Clapton. And you guys. Yeah, yes. I know. How mm. does that feel? <laughs> it's incredible. It feels electric. You know. Hey. Hey. You've worked uh, on that one. I have. I, have, I, have. I, I worked on that in the plane in the meantime. You know, actually, I've got, let me just check my notes. Um, <laughs> it, it, to you know, to be mentioned alongside those bands is really incredible. It's a real kind of pinch, pinch yourself moment. Mm -hmm. You know, we we grew up with Unplugged mm. in the '90s and with some of the most incredible performances we've ever seen. So for us to go back and try and, it made us incredibly <laughs> nervous yeah. in the build up, thinking about the performances that really shaped our lives as kind of young music fans. So yeah, to get that chance yeah. is incredible. It's as you say, it's the people that, did it even seem like people like George Michael did, you know, did a beautiful one and I watched a bit of that, which was a huge mistake because <laughs> he's, he's got the, he had the most beautiful voice and everything. And I'm like, we can't do that. Yeah. You know, so I, I think I went down the wrong path. Ah, yeah, 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 unplugged, you know, yeah. like Barbara Streisand. And <laughs> Just to scare yourself, yeah, exactly. all the really big voices. Yeah, no, yeah. Well, we don't have, well, I don't have a big voice, that's for sure. <laughs> well, but you um, see, see Rod Stewart, he's got about 150 musicians on stage. It's just like, I it's know. like a sea of people. Yeah. You know. And I think that's why it's been so special. You know, we grew up in the 90s, that was our kind of educational years yeah. as music fans. And so the first time we really became aware was Nirvana, you know, and, and, and Pearl Jam. And Pearl Jam maybe did it before Nirvana, actually. But, mm -hmm. but those bands that really shaped what we listened to. Mm -hmm. The fact that, even looking back now, the fact that heavy bands had, their songs were great in that acoustic set, and I think that impacted us a lot. Looking back, the fact that Nirvana were one of the noisiest kind of, yeah. you know, angriest punk mm -hmm. rock bands, but yet their songs worked in that, f you know, in that format, I don't like that word, but, you know, worked in an acoustic setting, and I think that was kind of taught us a lot about songwriting when we were growing say, up. Yeah. You know, because it's, you can make, Noisy things are a lot of fun. Hmm. But see, to make something that works noisily and really quiet, that's, it's, it's quite hard to do well, that. You can, you can disguise the bad songwriting yes. under noise, can't you? can, because mm -hmm. energy, so energy is, is its own thing. Yeah. You know, and sometimes that's all a song needs, is just that, that burst of energy. But obviously, an unplugged that wouldn't have worked. Mm -hmm. So, 
But yeah, back in the day, we used to. I listened to Unplugged so much that I, th I think we always used to do, kind of memorise mm -hmm. all the chat and <laughs> yeah. everything. Well, I, when I was watching it, I heard. Yeah, I heard that the Nirvana one was played a big part for you, and that you actually learnt the whole. Didn't you record it? <laughs> yeah, or we did. We did. Yeah. It was one before of our, you even have a, had a name. Or something. Yep, oh. exactly yeah, exactly. One of our friends' houses, just doing it on tape, tape deck, and for anyone. Born in the millennium, a tape deck <laughs> used to be what we listened to music on. Um, and yeah, just press play and record, and we literally did it top to bottom. I think the music was probably a bit hit and miss, yeah. but, the, yeah. but the, the chat between the songs was spot on. You know? We could have focused on the wrong part no, of that, I think. Oh, do you still have it? It, oh, it must be it somewhere. Must be right somewhere yeah. mm. I mean, I've got a few old cassettes of ours, but I've looked mm. for that no, after just sure. since we were doing Unplugged. Yeah. I wanted to look to see if I had it. I couldn't find it, but but it's it will be out there somewhere. Yeah. Someone's going to get a very nasty surprise. <laughs> 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 so, did you mention that you you looked back at you know George Michael and Nirvana and stuff like that? Did you actually do a lot of research when you were told you're going to be doing MTV Unplugged? Yeah, it's a fine line though. I, I guess research is probably the right way. I don't know, maybe that's the wrong word to use. It, but It was like Simon said, watching George Michael, it was incredibly scary. So it was trying mm. to find the inspiration from, say, Nirvana, which really inspired us at the time. Mm. But then to go back and to think about, I mean, I suppose one way of looking at it is, you know, you're going to play your songs live. You, you kind of want things to be perfect. But part of the thing that made the Nirvana performance so special to us that, is that it wasn't technically perfect, mm. you know. So you're trying that. to find that mm. balance between taking inspiration from things that have happened before but not scaring yourself to the mm. point that you're too scared to even walk on stage, yeah, you know? it So were you really scared? N nerv <laughs> nervous more than scared. We always get nervous before we go on, I think, yeah. but... Um, not scared. Uh, on the day, we ma it maybe became a little real. When we did the sound check, I think I probably got scared for a little mm. while. And then as soon as you kind of get on the stage, it's, it's the old cliche, as soon as you get on there mm. and you kind of start playing, and you, you just start to relax. Yeah. And, and the crowd were so wonderful. You know, we we ended up doing it in the round, which is what's well, not that unusual for Unplugged, but we did it standing in the round at the roundhouse. And so all the energy was pointed in towards us. So everyone was singing at us. And yeah. it, was such a, it was such a great feeling. We really felt that we were doing it together you know mm. hopefully that comes across in in the tv show and on the record you know but, yeah, but everyone sang so much mm. and it really felt like we were kind of amongst friends and that's mm -hmm. i think what hopefully made it feel special for us yeah. and hopefully it gives it a little bit of magic because there was just something in the air that night and and it you know the best moments become bigger than the three of us and the fact that our songs or we're playing a show and it becomes about everyone there mm. and, and i think all good music and good concerts should do that and i think i think hopefully we Managed that the night, yeah, uh, however, we hadn't really quite accounted for the volume of the, of the fans, oh, and it yeah. ended up being technically quite difficult to, <laughs> to hear what we were doing. Really? Oh, we <laughs> Did it really? I could yeah. hear my drums that were right in front but of my face. I'm going, I can't hear them, they <laughs> were so loud, but it's a great problem to have. Almost yeah. yeah, the first song, it was during the captain, we, we started and we'd. we'd we knew people would sing, but yeah. I don't think we thought quite how loud they would yeah. sing. So they were singing away, <laughs> yeah. weren't they? So as soon as we started, we were like, help, <laughs> SOS, <laughs> SOS. But, you know, like, but again, that makes, that's what gives it, makes that gig that gig. Mm. You know, if it was, you could probably see the fright in her face, yeah. actually, in the first song. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> this happened, but so close. you mentioned the round. I mean, what challenges did that bring? Because obviously you've got the audience essentially behind you as mm. well. Yeah. Mm. Toughest because we were sat down. I think yeah. if it, it, playing in the round can be tough if you're on, if you're mobile the whole mm -hmm. show. I think because we were seated, we, we just were very aware that we wanted everyone to feel a part of it. So as much as possible, we were turning around and just kind of making eye contact with people because yeah. I think that's important. You don't want to feel that you're at a show and you're just sitting looking at the back of a chair, you know. Yeah. And so it, that was our main concern, you know, with MTV and everything was that we want to make sure that everyone felt a part mm. of it. So round the back, it's, it, it gets a bit thinner because everyone kind of came round the front. Yeah. So, you know, I think I think it worked good. It, worked, yep. it really celebrates the beauty of the room. You know, it's such an iconic room, bef even before it was an the square house. <laughs> <laughs> Even before it was an iconic music venue, it was quite an iconic. I think they used to bring trains in there and turn them mm -hmm. around. I think yeah, that's, that's quite exactly what But it's a well. really beautiful post industrial building. So even before you think about the music, it was a great place just to sit and kind of appreciate the space, mm. you know. Yeah, it does have a magic to it, the it, venue. It really I mean, does. You'll be familiar with the venue. Obviously, you've seen lots yeah. of shows yeah. there as well. But it works in all 
Wick Lee. Wasn't yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, for me, when I watched watched the performance back, um, I just felt it was one of the most amazing, like visually, just everything about it was incredible. Yes. And like you say, the the fact that you were in the round and you had this beautiful tree in there with all the all the flowers mm -hmm. and stuff, it just like it just really brought the the whole the roundhouse to life yeah, and, sh and showed its beauty. Mm -hmm. It really did. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, MTV did a great job. We we tried to give as much input as we could. We went to the tree and things, but it was MTV were sure about the in the round and, mm -hmm. and you know we trusted them and thank goodness we did. And mm -hmm. Sam Range, the director, he's really managed to kind of capture the because it's qu it's a reasonable sized room the roundhouse, yeah. but it's got a real intimacy to it the way he's filmed it and. And just the saturation of the colours. I yeah, love it. Yeah, I love it. It's a great movie. <laughs> <laughs> great movie. The soundtrack's amazing. Woo! Um, but yes. Yeah, so, so did you say that? Because there is a little nod there to Nirvana MTV. Yeah. Isn't uh -huh. there with the flowers and yeah. stuff? Mm -hmm. that was, was that was that your input? That then? was exactly it. We we yeah. we'd originally talked about potentially a, a more gothic look or a kind of organic floral kind of mm -hmm. thing, or with you know because we used a tree on our opposite album. Yeah. So again. That was what pulled us to the, that side was opposites and Nirvana, and we were like, you know, we'd rather have things kind of living and breathing on the stage than yeah, just it make great. it, you know, too, like, um, you know, well, too gothic, really. Mm. You know, it was just going to be because the candles and things, it just yeah. would have felt a bit too ominous. Mm -hmm. And right. I think this really just gave it a lightness, and but definitely a Nirvana note. Yeah. That was, you know, the way their their stage looked was really gorgeous, and and especially I think in unplugged shows. The stage has to look nice. See when you just see a bunch of mm. guys or girls sat in, on stools mm -hmm. playing or something and there's nothing there, it can look really sparse yeah. and a bit... Mm -hmm. I don't know, it just and it, it takes you out the moment. You know, some of the MTV Unplugs that we have watched, th you know, you take these notes in your mind that like, we need to have something that feels welcoming, you know, rather than just stark and... Yeah, and it was, co was cosy. It was cosy, yeah. yeah. We yeah, wanted it to feel like you were coming round to Biffy's gaff for, it, for a wee <laughs> night. We sherry. <laughs> and I, I love it, Biffy's Gaff. Biffy's, Biffy's Gaff, Gaff eh? Yeah. So you, should, you should do a club night or something. We're opening up for a series Gaff. of pubs called Biffy's Gaff. <laughs> well, once marijuana is legalised, it'll be Biffy's Gaff. <laughs> <laughs> Biffy's Spliff. <laughs> Biff Spliff. Do that back. <laughs> You were saying something. <laughs> uh, I was, it was brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get that in the next edition. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I was just thinking how a lot of the MTV performances, and, and they were all more or less amazing, but a lot of them filmed well, in studios. Well, one's weird. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's quite a detail. They were all filmed in studios, and yeah. I, I think there was something special about being in the music venue, a mm. proper venue with that history, and I think that really came across, I'm, as Simon was saying, to create a bit of intimacy, still on a large scale, mm -hmm. I think is, is quite attractive. Yeah, mm -hmm. we, didn't want the, we didn't want the concert to feel like you were going to a museum, because sometimes a, an acoustic concert, if everyone sat down like that, it can sometimes feel mm -hmm. like you know, people are whispering and don't mm -hmm. want to sing along or something. So we really wanted to get that middle, that middle ground, mm -hmm. you know, between it being a show and also being a dirty gig kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Dirty yeah. gig. Yeah. A dirty but gig. Everyone <laughs> likes a dirty gig. <laughs> <laughs> We've done a few. Yeah. Those songs, were there any that you tried to strip back and you were like, they just don't work? As there were a couple. couple. Yeah. There were a couple that I think we knew probably wouldn't work, but everyone else around us kept pushing us to try and give it a go. So mm -hmm. people were kept asking for Wheels of Winter and we were like, have you heard that Are song? Sure? We've got a pretty good idea these days of which songs would work, you know, just as the records are being made. You know, the way we now record albums, mm -hmm. we kind of yeah. like we kind of build things up. So we kind of know early on which songs will be the front runners. But I really wanted to thought wanted to do Friends and Enemies, you know, from mm -hmm. Ellipsis, because it, it, that started as a, a kind of piano song, even mm -hmm. though it's turned into kind of electro rock song mm. or some <laughs> electro, electro rock, rock. <laughs> 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 who likes electro rock <laughs> what is electro rock um, it's you yeah no, oh god for what for three and a half minutes um but yeah that song to me always should work acoustic and we've never quite been able to crack mm, it no. you know i think it might be ben and i uh, we should just it okay, yeah. do it on your own like that's the problem <laughs> we didn't try yeah. that we didn't actually we didn't go for that one no but um but yeah most you know we actually the, the main struggle was getting the songs down to to like eighteen. Mm -hmm. We ended up playing eighteen in the night, yeah. and we a couple of them I, I didn't sing great on. So the album's going to be fifteen songs, mm -hmm. and I think the TV show is even slightly less than that. But we're lucky that over the years we have we've got a lot of songs that do work acoustically. You know, mm -hmm. we've got a lot of B sides and things that have just you know kind of standalone songs, I guess. That's and, it. and 
It was, th I guess, small wishes. We hadn't played live before. That was the first yep, time. Yeah, small mm -hmm. wishes. You'd mm -hmm. never played that live. We'd before? never, no. never played that live. Um, so why did you decide to play it live for MTV Unplugged? Um, to annoy your fans. <laughs> 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 no, it's one of it's one of our. It's a favourite. It's, it's, it's a, a favourite song that maybe just wouldn't fit into a regular rock set. Mm -hmm. You know, it just would be. I think, it's a bit too, too much, much fun. You know, like like it's it, it's got a real fun kind of hold down vibe to uh -huh. that yeah. song and. and when we when we've tried it in an electric set, you know, just practicing mm. it, it's like mm. <laughs> too much sure fun. That, yeah. sticks out, it sticks out a little <laughs> bit. Sticks out a lot, yeah. and it, but yeah, it's a song we're very proud of. So mm. it really, it made sense. We sat down and just practiced it once, and it immediately felt right. And mm. that's why we were quite lucky picking the songs for the set list because we we kind of knew in the first run through of each song which songs were going to mm. make it and mm -hmm. which weren't, and and then uh, and then it's just a case of trying to get the right order as well. You know, just. Mm. Because the dynamics different. We're so, we're so used to doing, you know, we start bigger at our normal shows yeah. and we'll take people in journey down and you take them dynamically down and mm. then visually down and there's so much going on. So it was, it's a different journey acoustically, mm. you know, that like we had to make sure it, that it was hopefully paced right. And mm. because the last thing you want when you're watching 90 minutes of, of acoustic music is it, it falling it, asleep. Yeah. It, it, could, it can have that, <laughs> you know, you know. Like Hopefully, you know, I don't. I think we managed to completely avoid <laughs> yeah. that, but that's the yeah. fear, you know, it's because we're used to so, you know, it's, it's so loud, yeah. 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 so loud. That that was the strange thing about coming off and and being like still stood up, not bent over in a heap, lying in the corner, kind of exhausted. Yeah, I mean, the, the adrenaline didn't go anywhere mm. because you were running about. Yeah, stage normally you have it. So it was it was quite strange to come off and not be like just wiped out yeah you know? you're used to you're used to the physical exhaustion um, or we yeah. certainly are after the show which goes hand in hand with the adrenaline and to not have that physical exhaustion yeah. i think we all we didn't sleep for no, a couple like of weeks. nights <laughs> after, just, like, you didn't because you had not got rid of it uh -huh. yeah, yeah exactly yeah. it's like you're full-on surveillance mode uh. for the next <laughs> three days just like that. it's weird like you can't it's uh, even after this long of doing this we cannot control our, our mm. bodies in that mm. instance you mm. would think the amount of shows we've done and things that we could get a grip in that but mm -hmm. certain things just happened and, and yeah we were all it was like we were jet lagged for three days uh -huh. and was it because am i right there was nothing from the first three albums no we did I, puzzles I, so we did them um, a diary of always so song okay. uh, which didn't end up making the album so uh -huh. that was just a, there in the moment and then it was gone because yeah. that you're a lot you're a lot heavier on those first three aren't yeah. you so i did wonder when i was listening i was like oh i wonder if they're gonna have yeah we did there's a couple of b-sides from the earlier mm -hmm. records which mm -hmm. we thought about doing but as I say, we just ended up, once we got all the songs together, we had about 32 songs That's that we could lot. do acoustic, yeah. and, mm -hmm. a, and the temptation was to keep mm -hmm. playing loads of songs. We, we On the night, we did like an encore of a B-side from our very first single, it's a song called Breathe Her, and we ended the night with that, you know, just, just as a, hopefully as a treat for the fans, and it's nice to do that, but some of those songs aren't quite as good as some of the songs we have now, you know, and that, and that yeah. just comes from ex getting experience. better at songwriting yeah. and experience, and knowing that, also knowing that a song just because it's old and has a special place in someone's heart doesn't mean that it's that it should be played. You mm. know, and I think we're a little bit a little bit better now at being mm. kind of colder with it. Yeah, yeah. We, we used to be more selfish, I think. And, and I remember years ago going to do like I mean a long, long time ago going, going to do an EP launch where we didn't play <laughs> any of the songs from that EP. And I think we used to be a little bit more difficult in terms of <laughs> or just stupid. <laughs> just kind stupid. Of uh, yeah, it was, like, it was their very first EP that uh. which is going on eBay for very <laughs> um, But you have four songs on it, and we played an eight song set, and we didn't play one song yeah. from our EP, and it was the launch <laughs> really? of the EP. And I know. Just total naivety, excitement about our new stuff, and mm. it's you know it's. It's taken us probably this amount of years to kind of yeah. go, no, you know what? You know, like, let's. <laughs> Sometimes it's alright to play the songs that people know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Love it. So, how long did you get to rehearse on it then? About a week or so. Yeah. Is that all it took? A week? Yeah, yeah. We, didn't, we didn't want too long, did we? We wanted to still be excited by it yeah. and, and for it to feel like. Like you say, have some of the mistakes. Exactly, yeah. yeah, a little bit of that. We didn't want it to be super polished, but yeah. we didn't want to be. Equally terrified. So a gig, we wanted it to be a, a gig and feel like a, mm -hmm. a concert rather yeah. than like a studio performance. Because mm -hmm. again, the interesting thing, James, you watched a lot of the Nirvana Unplugged last night, yeah, actually. Yeah, and, I did. and like, I think they were recording for like three and a half hours. It was like, you know, it was a long time. Watch all the Lord of the Rings. There's a lot of outtakes from that. And if you're if you are a fan like I am, it's just heaven, absolutely uh, heaven. Yeah. If you're not a fan, it, it maybe drags on a little bit, mm -hmm. but. Yeah, we wanted to 
not feel like a studio set up, but feel yeah. kind of lively and still are, are re relatively organic, where there's time for yeah. a joke or a, you know, mm. not just by the by the book, you know, mm -hmm. every, every minute. But yeah, it was definitely more. It's a recording of the gig rather than an acoustic album yeah. kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, you know, yeah, that's yeah, how we wanted to see absolutely. it. You know, because we know that some other bands when they've played have done songs three or four times. You know, mm. which. It, I don't know how they could do that because <laughs> after three times we were like, how many times have I we know, played this? Yeah. But for us, we really wanted it to, you know, to embrace the moments where, like, well, I'm just thinking about my voice breaking and not being able to sing. You know, like, really embrace that. <laughs> Ho hopefully, we can embrace that more as the years go. On. But uh, you know, and just just gonna make it. You know, it is what it is. It was real. It was live. It That's was there. It was a moment that was shared, and hopefully, it's a moment that will now last for a long, long time yeah. because we're releasing the record, and and it's it's wonderful. I think. It's strange when you're making a record of songs that already existed as well. Like that's a weird mentality that we yeah. haven't done a lot mm -hmm. of that, you know. And uh, yes. but yeah, re so proud to just to just have our unplugged record. That was so nice. Even the artwork actually, we we wanted to have elements in Nirvana's mm -hmm. artwork and things, you know, because I mean, there's a lot of iconic performances from the nineties, like Pearl Jam and Nirvana was a big one. But yeah. Springsteen and Neil Young and mm -hmm. that. When I was young and I saw mm -hmm. these performances, I didn't know even wh how iconic these guys mm -hmm. were. It was just. I think they maybe Neil Young maybe did it after Nirvana and stuff, and I'm watching yeah. going, who's this grizzly yeah. old yeah. bastard? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, and, and it's amazing because then I, was, I would discover bits of it Neil Young after that, yeah. and so, you know, and, and hopefully this this does the same. Mm -hmm. Not that we're as old as Neil Young, yeah. but you know, like that's the, the beautiful thing is you make a you make a record like this and it hangs around, you know, but, you know, because of the iconic nature of Unplugged and everything, and and uh, yeah, it's just exciting to to be a part of that yeah. canon. And uh, you did the traditional cover as well, and oh. you chose God Only Knows. Yes, we did. Why that? Well, I know, I know that's a big song for you, isn't yeah. it? Because you you had it at your wedding, your yeah, first dance, first and you've got the you've got the chorus I tattooed on your chest. I do. I've now covered it up. Well, not deliberately, but we just got loads <laughs> of tattoos, <isn't> it? <laughs> <laughs> blasting over other tattoos. But so, yes, yeah, my. So why why now? There's never felt a special enough moment for a start. Mm -hmm. I don't think there was a moment that I thought anyone else should cover that so to me that's a perfect song yeah. and it was only doing unplugged when we were talking about you know it's always the chat when you're when you're doing unplugged you get asked to do a cover and and we didn't want to do a song that was just a song we liked or you know it mm. needed to be something that really was connected to us to the core and, and really of who we were so that's why and I just went away one night and came in the next day and said I think I've got it yeah. and like we'd been practicing a couple other songs that we loved like not very well known songs, but like Red House Painters songs that really meant a lot to us. They would have went, they would have gone down a treat and MTV <laughs> unplugged. <laughs> um, but yeah, so and then I just came in the next day, played it, and the boys' re the reaction was it was like right, we, we can do this, and mm -hmm. it's just one of the best written songs ever. It's so beautifully simple but complex. The sentiment in it is mm -hmm. kind of dark but also really sweet, and. And I learned some new chords even <laughs> after all this wow. time playing guitar. <clears throat> so it was it was a pleasure to do it, and yeah, and, and because it was going to be it was going to be an album, I, I thought it was just so important that the song was a song with a connection to us, and, and you know, and, and without sounding rude, it, it's on our unplugged. So we wanted to make sure it was an iconic song, mm -hmm. you know, and, and go, as I think I say in the thing, God bless Brian Wilson. Absolutely. You know, it's just hard to believe that one guy could write so many amazing songs but specifically that song is just mm -hmm. unreal yeah so hopefully it comes across our love and respect for the mm -hmm. song but also yeah. that we didn't want to just to try and do what the beach boys did because yeah. nobody can you know no, sure and uh, i love the fact that the harmonica made an appearance yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> i was so excited when i saw that i was like no he's not and he's got the brace he's got the <laughs> bob dylan brace you gotta do yeah. it you gotta do it <laughs> Had, had had you had you played it before or yeah well it's on yeah it's on that song drop it that we it was on the extended version of puzzle so mm. so yeah that's been out for a while but yeah we and couldn't you played on you the album well. you played it on the album yeah I played it yeah. on the al I mean I, I think a joke it well, I know that a joke yeah. the thing the good thing about harmonica is anyone can play it you know, <laughs> I do remember you saying out, that yeah. 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 but yeah it just again it was one of those as soon as we knew we were doing unplugged that like we've got to play that you know there's certain little boxes yeah. to tick that you just you, we just felt that we had oh, to kind of do it. Absolutely. We get you, wear, you wear it well and you play it so well. Oh, thanks very much. Mm. doesn't feel it when it keeps catching in my beard. <laughs> <I'm like laughs> <laughs> um, and that was part, you know, we got our wonderful cello player out to play with us as well. And that that was obviously inspired by Nirvana. Mm. And we just wanted to kind of pick these really cherished moments from our history to put them into, be, yeah. be a part of our Unplugged. And, and I think it is important to, 
to not just sit there and play a quieter version yeah. of a song, you know, mm. like we try and reinterpret mm. the songs, we change the key of all the songs when we play them acoustic mm -hmm. and and it's something that we really, we enjoy doing that, we've always enjoyed doing that, but you know, some bands, and it's not a criticism, but they'll just go and just play the same song, mm -hmm. same kind of dynamics mm -hmm. and, and, but it's That's all an that. acoustic guitar, but for us we really wanted to kind of savour those moments that were... You don't want the only difference to be that you're sitting down. You know, mm -hmm. you want to know. you want to explore the musical. Because I like bands standing yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the time, yeah, yeah. apart from <laughs> boys on a race. That must have been weird for you, you sitting down and the audience standing that, yeah. up. Yeah. yeah, and everyone's yeah. still. It was yeah. really, really weird because you're so used to just getting people going, yeah. you know, and no mosh pits. No mosh pits. Like. Plus, I'm used. To, that's the first time I think I've ever sat down. Yeah. Mm. I always stand up when I'm playing acoustic as mm. well, and. Yeah. It, it just looked wonky, mm -hmm. you know, to film it. And I'm, there's one guy standing in the middle going like that. <laughs> it didn't feel right. So I sat down. So actually, I, I felt doubly weird mm -hmm. sitting down. It's not something I'm mm. comfortable with. And I shall mm. never do it again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from right now. I'm not singing, guys. I'm not singing, right? So you, you, you actually kept your clothes on as well for this one, <laughs> yeah. which yeah. I didn't notice. Yeah. It seemed appropriate to, to be clothed for this one. Um, that would have been extra weird, wouldn't it, as well? Yeah, I think. yeah no, just yeah. slowly de-robing during uh, the show. Yeah, that would have been... <laughs> nipple chafe off the acoustic, though, that's the problem. I love it. So are you going to tour the acoustic set? Yes. You are? We, we're looking forward, we're savouring it, actually. Mm -hmm. We, we, we mm -hmm. talked about it for quite a while. Mm -hmm. You know, we love playing proper, loud, noisy shows. We, you know, we've been in tour for a good few years as a band, and we thought this is this is the perfect time to be lazy, <laughs> 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 to go out and sit down and be able to relax and have a proper chat with the crowd. And it's something we're really looking forward mm -hmm. to. So, it will we'll be touring probably September, October. Okay. Mostly just Europe. Actually, I don't think we're going beyond Europe for mm -hmm. this run of shows. You know, it's not it's not an extended run of stuff. We just want to go to a few special cities and and play and. And it's such a different headspace, you know. Mm. I, th I think even going to cities that we've been to like dozens of times, mm. in an acoustic way, we're going we're going to be in a different it's headspace, yeah. you know. When we <coughs> go in the full band format, it's like take no prisoners, you know. From the moment we arrive, we're like, great, <laughs> yeah. what's happening, you know? And uh, and this time we'll probably be a bit more, you know, like. <laughs> you know, have a masseuse on tour with you. Oh, just <laughs> Although we, we can't really no. on an, an acoustic tour, no. we'd be really be asking for that it. <laughs> In the full on electric tour, maybe, uh, but yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Well, we don't have one. For yeah, we don't. Tour, so to get one for an acoustic tour, I make a little bit in the side. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. After yeah. the show, when oh, I'm resting good, my voice. Yeah. When I when I watched it back, I felt like it was a real renaissance for music television, and like you know how you talk about this was your childhood, you know, mm -hmm. growing up in the '90s and watching Nirvana and stuff like that. Do you feel like because I, I I was super excited because I felt like my God you've changed something <laughs> this is it it is a renaissance for music television and this is maybe where we're gonna start going well, again I, ho I hope so mm. you know it's I think you know it, MTV became a different thing for a while mm. you know and, and the fact that they had to start MTV Music you know yeah. is kind of hilarious but <laughs> but it's it's really important that MTV know know how important and iconic these shows and things were, you know, yeah. and, and and it really educated more than a generation of kids about music and about what was out there and and the thought that it could be coming back, you know, and, it, and we're the first, I think we were mm -hmm. the first British mm -hmm. ones. I know they've done mm -hmm. a few shows around, around the world, but it's a really important thing to keep alive, you know, mm -hmm. like especially in this day and age when things turn over so quick. I think something with Gravitas should be coming back and should be sticking mm -hmm. around, you know, and then and, and hopefully, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, kind of educates another generation well, of kids, not educates, well you know. When we were 13, 14, if we didn't have loud, heavy guitars, we weren't interested, and then the bands that we loved because of that brought us into a different world, I suppose, and mm -hmm. kind of broadened our, our horizons. Yeah. So, I mean, that might happen for, for other young kids that never listened to an acoustic guitar no, or right, a softer though. piece yeah. of music or something like that. That was the thing about Nirvana Unplugged, was it showed that you could have intensity without having volume and mm -hmm. I think that was what, you know, <coughs> for three young rock fans from Scotland, that was like a, a total enlightened moment, mm -hmm. you know, where it's like, wow, so you don't need to be screaming in someone's face to have still have an intense connection with yep. something. Mm -hmm. and and the uh, and the fact that Nirvana covered so many strange songs in that one, mm. I think, was really important. Mm. So, so yes, yeah, even introducing songs with what you cover, what you play, you know, maybe, s I mean, some people watching our unplugged might not have heard "God Only Knows," which mm. sounds yeah. extremely bizarre, but you know, you know, maybe they haven't. Mm -hmm. Why haven't? <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with what the fuck are you been doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
<laughs> but did, when you walked away, did you feel like you'd hit a milestone in your career? Yeah, right in the forehead. <laughs> 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 it was it was almost overwhelming. You know, yeah. there's, there's very few shows that you know we're we're lucky over the years. We've done a handful of shows where you come off and you d you don't know how to feel because it's so it's almost overwhelming. Yeah. Like the first mm -hmm. time we headlined Reading in Leeds, mm -hmm. first time we headlined like kind of re or Barrowlands in Glasgow, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and doing something like this. There's a, there, you can't quite compute it, and we're not mm -hmm. very good with each other because we. Because we're the same three guys that have always been it. We don't like to kind of say to the other, each other, oh, that was <laughs> really special, <laughs> really important. You know, so we just kind of pretend like nothing's happened. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep, you know, so, it, so it's, it's kind of like a slight l version of denial after mm -hmm. it, you know, but I think that's to survive. I think that's how we keep moving forward and keep our eyes on the next thing mm -hmm. we're going to do is by almost not relishing it too much, yeah. which maybe sounds a little sad, but, mm -hmm. it, but it, it's, I think yeah. it's, it's a way for us to thrive that's it's a defense mechanism yeah. that we've picked up over the years which is you just if it feels like too much then just kind of ignore it for a really? bit yeah, yeah. So you need yeah. to you need yeah. to work on savoring the moment a little bit i know yeah i mean it's not but then maybe that's why you're so that. grounded still well maybe I, I i think that you're probably right i think so because we never we've had a few moments in our career where you we sit down and, and going well done you know we've mm -hmm. done it but i think it's just I don't know if it's just the part of the world we grew up in where it's just on to the next thing and yeah. that, but... Um, well, you, even the way you, you find it awkward to say the word career. You know, we're not... We're not I know. Like, <laughs> like, we like just don't... We don't... I swore! We don't... Know, it's, <laughs> like, it's, like, you just say it's such a weird... It's just the way <laughs> we've always been, and yeah, it is a bit naive, but that's that's all right. I think you the, know, it's okay. the enjoyment is actually coming now, like a couple of months later when the album's done, so we get to kind of enjoy that a lot more now mm. i think you know like because we that was our last show we went home we've mm. been playing working on new music since then so there's not been a lot of reflection and it's, it's nice to have waited a couple of months mm -hmm. and to now be <coughs> you're talking about the show and the album and so i think it's it's come at the right time i think yeah. if you'd spoken to us in november about it we would have been like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah yeah didn't happen <laughs> nothing yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'd be like talking about everybody else who's yeah, unplugged apart, apart from, from yeah. yours. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> so, so how do you feel about being one of the biggest um, rock bands in the UK at the moment? Mm. Terrific. <laughs> 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 really good. <laughs> well, we're, like we're one of the best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what can I say? You know, we've done it, you know, we've spent a lot of time doing this. I, I still believe we're the best band in the world. And, mm. and, you know, there's a lot of killer rock bands out there who all feel the same way about their bands, and that's mm -hmm. terrific, but, but I'm, I'm sat right here, right fucking now. <laughs> um, we're, we're proud of ourselves, because we've never, we've never compromised on what we've done. We're, we still live and practice in the same part of the world that we always have. We follow our muse. We don't worry about really what anyone else is doing. You know, we've never, we just kind of rely on ourselves, and I think, I think that's what feels satisfying. And from our previous question, you know, is we also don't sit around going, yeah, Mm. The biggest and the best. Yeah. And the biggest. But mm -mm. but you know what? We wouldn't be able to go out and do it if we didn't feel it and we didn't have that confidence. Yeah. And that that's that's the thing. Sometimes people mistake our kindness for weakness. Mm -hmm. But like, you know, we love our band. You mm -hmm. know, like we, you know, we've done a lot with this band, and and it feels it feels good. I see a lot of great bands coming up as well who are being kind enough to voice us as an influence, and and I appreciate that more than anything. When I see a, a band that I really like coming up saying they were listening to our band, that mm -hmm. means a lot. And that, that's probably the, the most exciting part, you know, to, to imagine that our music could have influenced someone in the way that, yeah. you know, Nirvana's put it in Pearl Jams or whatever, and it, it, you know, influenced us. Mm -hmm. I mean, what you're doing is really important because as well, you know, you're keeping rock alive in the mainstream. It, it needs to, you know it, what, you know it, we can't, have ev everything can't sound the same. And mm -hmm. that's, that's a tough thing in why we're still in a transitional period, you know, because, if everyone's listened to Mr. Blobby, then Mr. Blo <laughs> then Mr. Blobby, yeah. what year are you in? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, if, if it was the same Not world back in 1990 <laughs> or whenever it was, you know, it's, it's like, it's like Blobby much. would be getting <clears throat> billion streams and it's like, that doesn't mean that Blobby's true. the best thing going. He's, oh, the second <laughs> album is all right, the <laughs> second <laughs> album is pretty good. Yeah. But rock, the world needs rock music. Rock mm -hmm. music is, you know, it's like rock and hip hop are the two aggressive types of music they mm -hmm. can try and tell it as it is not ca don't care about offending people you know like and see when you hear everything coming t to start to sound exactly the same you know when you've got a pop song over here it's exactly the same as a dance music it's like the same as mm -hmm. a an electro rock song yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but you know what i mean look, when things i hate it when things start yeah. to become that mm. sounding are in this box and that's there's so many exciting and amazing rock bands around 
it's a tough time for them in the mainstream at the moment. Yeah. But, uh, but having said that, you know, I think rock has never truly belonged in the mainstream. We've always been outsiders. People listen to albums, you know, that's why rock bands don't mm -hmm. get streamed as much as other, yeah. but, you know, it doesn't mean that people care more about bands and, and people have a connection to people and what a band has to say rather than just a song or yeah. something. So, and I think that's why it'll always be so important and, and you know, why there's kids picking up guitars everywhere and now they want to feel that they're actually doing something, actually saying something and, and there'll always be a place for that in the world and, and I think once people start getting bored of this omnipresent, same sound, same song, jazz, mm -hmm. it's not jazz. It's not jazz, <laughs> is it? <laughs> but you know, I mean, people will get bored, it's going to happen, it's happening very, it's happening right now, and mm -hmm. people all up and down the street are getting bored of the nonsense that they have to listen to, so yeah. Mm -hmm. So of course rock is the way forward. <laughs> of course it is. So how do you relax? Sit down the sofa. And just interviews. <laughs> yeah. um, I think... Do you, hang, do you hang out together when you're at home? <coughs> or are you sick of the sight of each other? We're very rarely at home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're very rarely at home. We play out together a lot. You know, uh, I play out in the street. Um, uh, uh, I think we live in quite a relaxing part of the world. If that's, I mean, that's a weird thing to say. I haven't really come down that avenue before, but it, it's it's quite... It's, it's quite, quite slow, quiet, yeah. it's quite slow. We this practice is probably it what you need and yeah. that's, yeah. that's quite nice. Road. Yeah, 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 the viewer are practice room windows just of fields and cows and sheep and things oh, like that. Mm -hmm. There's something about it that's quite, it just sort of brings you down and lets you breathe a little mm -hmm. bit easier. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's tough to relax though, because when she's finished an album, you're kind of like, right, let's go in your own tour for ages. Mm. And I always think after coming home from tour, just be able to relax for a while, <laughs> but immediately <laughs> it's like, oh God, what are we doing next? Where yeah. are we going? So, it's nice to be at home, but I don't think it's it's ever relaxing because we're <laughs> we're just constantly moving, and I, I quite like that. I, I, I like us to feel that we're constantly kind of grinding the gears, you know. Yeah. I think if if the boys phone me and said, "Right, we're going away for three weeks holiday," but like, oh, all right, oh, I. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> and vice versa, you know, no. you'd probably be like. <laughs> yeah. I get I think we we relax more on tour on, day, on days off. I think that that's when we when we I know we're, we're switched on still because we're touring, but on days off we we have to relax because our bodies are just yeah. done in. So we tend to we go out and have a nice dinner together, eat loads, and, we'll eat loads and we just relax hard. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and have, have you taken up any hobbies? Because you know a oh, lot relaxing of hard. <laughs> yeah. relaxing hard. I like that, but no, like golf and you know the boys golf. Yeah, we golf a bit. You're a good yeah. golfer. Simon Simon's also a good golfer. He doesn't, he doesn't admit it, but he is. Um, we've been bowling, go kart, and just those regular things yeah. that regular people mm -hmm. do. <laughs> um, it's tough though because it, like the band, this is what we enjoy to do. So this is like our fun thing as much as it's become our job. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's really weird when your your actual hobby that you've had your entire life <laughs> becomes your job yeah, as well I because can it, it's still it's still what I would do to sit down and relax or go and sit and play my piano yeah. or something. That's mm -hmm. still how I would relax, would relax. you know and. I'm, I'm relearning violin at the moment because I used to play violin okay. when I was uh, from the age of four to nine or something, and I really want to learn that. So that's like I would tear my hobby, I guess, I've taken up, but uh -huh. it's in the zone still, man. <laughs> 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 so uh, would you put that on an album, a violin? De definitely. I mean, uh, we actually we've we're working on the movies soundtrack, but we've also got about 15 songs for our next Biffy album. We've been yeah. very, very busy, <laughs> and uh, I did play the bit of violin in that. It, it took a lot of. Uh, Cuts. Editing, yeah. <laughs> well, everybody in the room is going, how are you doing that? Because you were just doing like a, your, your so ham is going wasn't. like, like yeah. a yeah. and everyone's sitting going. Impressed him with weird playing. It was like, okay. no one's ever played a violin <laughs> like that. I'm like, yeah. There's all these yeah. scary blokes standing <laughs> about going, what is going on? Um, but yeah, no, it's... it's uh, Makes you look very intellectual. It does, mm. I feel very intellectual. Yeah. <laughs> But it's cool. a beautiful instrument, and it's yeah, it's definitely something that if I could play it better, it would be in a lot more songs, you know. I think, uh, but I wouldn't scare the boys just yet. <laughs> no. Well, listen, congratulations on your MTV Unplugged. I think it is one of the best that I've seen. So oh, congratulations. Thank you so much, Kaylee. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm on the biff. You say I love you, boy, but I know you lie. 